So while you are sitting, uh, I'm explaining to a line. Uh, so as it was already one of the essential, I'm organizing both of this, but uh, I have a system of this trainer uh, for maybe more than 20 years now. And uh, currently I'm the chief system architect and head of DevOps at Cypher. Uh, we have a few other brands in the future, so they are good. So uh, I'm also in my spare time I'm teaching uh, network security and uh, Linux system administration uh, in the Sophie University and I speak at the best practice. So today I actually proposed seven different talks. Uh, this was the one that uh, was uh, I said and maybe next time I'll do some of the others. And next time you will survey. Yeah, <laughs> you can ask out. Maybe it would be a better that if I had the booking talk here after this. <laughs> so uh, I, I will be talking about uh, engine modules. Uh, who here doesn't know what engines is? It's a web server. <laughs> uh, Main used as a proxy for uh, different things. And even though it's a web server, it's used as a proxy for email and, and other stuff. Why? Why? So. Uh, before I start uh, with some the other important things about the modules, uh, why would you need to build modules for engines? Uh, for Apache, there are like uh, maybe 2,000 different modules right now. Uh, for engines, uh, the number is a lot less, uh, maybe around uh, 500, 600 uh, modules right now. Uh, the difference uh, between Apache and engines is uh, usually the performance. But uh, the other difference is actually the functionality that uh, Apache gives you and engine last. Uh, so sometimes when you want to move your uh, whole stack from Apache to engines, there are certain things that you simply cannot do in engines. And this is when you actually want to write your own modules. Uh, also, there are things that are available in uh, the, commercial, the commercial version of uh, engines, but you would actually want it in the open source version. So you would need to write those. Uh, Engines actually supports uh, two different types of uh, modules. Uh, one is the static compiled modules. Uh, these are uh, files that uh, you actually to uh, add to the build of engines, and uh, they are included in uh, your engines after uh, the server is built. Uh, they can not be disabled, they take up memory, and uh, they sometimes uh, actually work on your requests, so they can slow down your requests in certain points. This is why I think uh, two years ago uh, they introduced the dynamic modules. Uh, who here doesn't know what uh, dynamic shared objects? Perfect. So uh, dynamic shared objects, dynamic modules that are loaded uh, to engines. Uh, it's nice that you can actually have uh, one engine server and uh, with different modules actually make it completely different beast. So dynamic modules allow you to, uh, to have your one build with all the files, all the modules that well, and configure this on each machine uh, the way you want it. So you can build everything and do not include everything in your uh, set. Uh, how you want those modules in the configuration, you have this option of module, your modules uh, directory, and the shared module file. That's it, pretty simple. So uh, how would you build a third party module? Uh, usually, uh, when you're configuring your uh, engine, some of you, I'm sure, are using engines by means of apt-get install or yum install or uh, whatever install stuff. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that's usually do configure, make, make install. So if you are building custom modules, you definitely need to do this. <laughs> so uh, you download the source of engines, uh, go to the configure, uh, use the width compact. Uh, width compact actually gives you compatibilities with uh, different enables. Uh, compatible functions in uh, engines and actually enables uh, engines to uh, allow loading of uh, shared modules. So, uh, if you want to have static module in your engines, you use the add module directive, and if you want dynamic modules, obviously the dynamic module uh, directive. Uh, you point this to the path of your module. Usually, what you do is uh, you start by simply calling some of the open source modules right now and with those with that code you start writing your own uh, module. Uh, it's a little bit uh, harder to start uh, from zero. Uh, so 
this is why usually most people start with copying someone else. You can actually copy the standard modules that are uh, within engines. So uh, first, uh, some information about how engines actually runs, uh, uh, handles your their requests. First, you have uh, uh, handlers. So, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, uh, I have uh, removed this slide unintentionally. Uh, so the requests usually uh, what's happening first is uh, your request goes to uh, engines. Then engines has to uh, find the server definition and your virtual host if you're most used, uh, more used to Apache. So your server definition or virtual host to which uh, it has to uh, get your request. So your request is, for example, for example, the .com, right? Uh, but example.com may be on one IP or another IP. So your server definitions have uh, listen directives. If uh, you have uh, listen directive for uh, access, uh, this means that uh, this server definition is uh, listening for all IPs. But if you have configured your engines to listen on specific IPs, the first thing the engines is uh, trying to find is the server definition in the configuration that is matching your IP, the IP that you're accessing. After that, on this IP, you may have multiple server definitions, and uh, then it's searching for the name of uh, your uh, server definition, which is example.com or uh, example2.com, and so on. So uh, this is the first thing. After that, you have location logs. After you get into the server, uh, you now want to find where the request is actually finished, so you get into a location box, uh, which are, sorry not I really deleted this slide, this is very important. <laughs> uh, first, you get this uh, most specific path location, so these are static locations that you start with slash path to something, slash path to something, so uh, you have one specific uh, uh, location which is slash, that uh, if anything, if nothing else matches, it will go to there. But after that, uh, engine supports uh, regular expression location matches. So the first matches that are specific, the full pass, you don't care how they are configured in uh, the configuration path, the, in, uh, the order they are configured in the configuration path, because uh, after engine starts, it reads the configuration path and sorts those. So uh, the most specific will first uh, will be first match, and it will continue. However, if you uh, if you have regular expression matches, uh, the regular expression matches are the first regular expression match uh, is the one that gets uh, the request. So uh, the order how you configure the regular expression matches is very important. And after that. Uh, when you enter the location, you either serve static content where you define where the static content is, or you proxy this content, uh, this request to something like uh, uh, FastCGI, MicroWHI, uh, other web servers, and so on. So, what type of modules you can write for these configuration things? Uh, you can have handlers that are actually handling the uh, actual request. You can have uh, local answers. Uh, these are there is one type of modules that I omitted because nobody should write those. These are the uh, event mechanisms, uh, like uh, select poll and poll uh, mechanisms of the server. They're quite good in engines, and you shouldn't actually implement those things. Uh, so uh, you have uh, handlers that are actually handling certain types of uh, files, for example. Well, the answers which are used to uh, spread your request across uh, different upstream servers that you have, and then you have filters. And most of the uh, modules that you usually write are filters. But sometimes you may actually have uh, to create a handler, for example, to create better statistics. Because the, the stats module of uh, engines is gibberish. Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't use that. Write your own, it's faster. <laughs> uh, so uh, how are these modules ordered? Uh, in your source directory, when you build engines, uh, there is one directory called uh, Apple. Uh, after you build engines, in this directory you have one file called modules. Uh, don't mistake it uh, to the other file, module, <laughs> because they, the modules file has a comment of all the static modules, static modules that you can build in engines and how they are ordered. So uh, the handlers, the local answers, the filters which will uh, be executed after which you have an order order there. Uh, then let's start with our module here. Uh, when you want to uh, build a module, the only two things you need are a config path that defines uh, uh, 
where the source is and uh, what file should be included, what's the name of your uh, module, and then you have your C file that has everything. Uh, has anyone here written an um, Apache module? Okay. So uh, it's a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we have in the config file, uh, you have the name here. The name of the module uh, has to be included with the other modules, and since this is actually shell script, uh, this is a shell variable, this is a gay shell variable, it's the same variable, and you are appending to this variable your module name. It's very important here. <laughs> then uh, the source files, you are again append to the source files all the, uh, all the C files that you need for your uh, module, and dependencies uh, if you have scanner files. Uh, most of most of the modules uh, for uh, engines are quite simple, so uh, most of the time they don't you know, have data files. They're, everything is in one single C file. Uh, I'm talking about most of them, not all of them. Like if you uh, if you check out the Lua module, uh, the Lua module is uh, maybe around uh, 3,000 bytes of code, and it has a lot of things. Uh, so when you start your module. Uh, what you have first in your module is uh, the header files for engines. These are the main definitions for engines. Without those, you cannot start writing your code. Then, uh, after that, uh, you usually uh, include one other type of uh, uh, includes. That is, if this is the web server model, if it is for uh, mail, if it is for uh, stream. Because you can write different types of models for uh, engines. And now, uh, we'll walk through one uh, uh, example of module that uh, I have called uh, from GitHub just to show you uh, what's in a module here. Okay. Uh, when you are starting the master process, uh, 
uh, that is handling the, the socket. Uh, you, you, you can do different things like, uh, okay, go memory, uh, open files. Uh, do something that you want on the start on the server. You can uh, have a module that uh, its only job is uh, to serve as a hook. When the server is started, to notify, for example, your cloud uh, or system, or something like, uh, like that. Then after that, on each uh, uh, module, uh, every time you're loading this code, you can actually run a function that, uh, after you have loaded the code, you can initialize your code here. This is very important when you're doing something like uh, shared memory between different processes, uh, and then uh, initialization of the process and uh, each thread inside the process. Then uh, garbage collection sometimes, or want to call something, uh, clear the shared memory. Uh, on exit of the thread, exit of the process, and exit of the master, you can do different things. Uh, there are not many modules that are using this. This is why I'm explaining this here, because you rarely see them uh, in use. But it's important to know that there is a place where you can initialize your shared memory, and it's important that it's somewhere here in this here, not where uh, before you're reading the configuration or something like this. So the actual handler function uh, is here. Let's uh, examine what it does. Uh, I'll explain. We uh, receive here a request. Uh, the request is uh, actually a structure with all the data already separated for us by the core uh, engine's uh, functionality. And after that, we receive it. And uh, if you want to see what to do <coughs> there in the structure, uh, you have to open uh, the engines uh, dash uh, request header file. Uh, very important to know these files uh, because uh, this is the only way you actually learn how to write these, uh, these modules. So uh, the first thing it does is uh, checks if uh, the request method is uh, either uh, get or get. And if it's not, uh, we are saying, OK, this is not for us. So we don't, uh, we don't know how to handle anything else. So uh, we return uh, engine not allowed. It's important here that we are not declining the request. This means uh, if we decline the request, this means that we will actually return the <coughs> request to the uh, browser. We will return that uh, we don't want to uh, continue with your request. However, with uh, not allowed, uh, engines can continue with the next modules and actually uh, do something else with other modules. It's very mm, common mistake to just to uh, return here with the client or our board. Uh, then, uh, since we don't need the actual request body here, we don't need it at all, uh, we discard it. And after that, uh, we uh, set up the header that we are going to send uh, to, send to the uh, customer, uh, to the browser. So, uh, since the header out is actually the, uh, Engine string type, it has a length and data, and uh, we are setting the length here and then uh, uh, setting the data to text HTML. Uh, and this is the content type of uh, this is the content type header. After that, uh, if it is head, uh, we are simply returning the header. If it is not, we are allocating again uh, some uh, uh, memory, and here we are actually copying uh, the data from uh, the configuration you will see in a bit. Uh, and to uh, the buffer, uh, to the memory that we already uh, allocated, and where was the D sent, uh, sending the headers, send headers, uh, output the request, wait, somewhere I'm missing the D. It, it works, I'll show you. Uh, where in the Oh yeah, okay, I'll move here. Yeah. So uh, this here is sent content and is header. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we are sending the uh, data with a filter directly to the customer. Uh, here we are simply assigning another uh, pointer here to uh, to be and we are moving the data. It's, there is an easier way we will see with a few functions and engines. 
to copy the string uh, uh, there in the buffer, but uh, here the author, uh, I haven't written this, I simply compiled it. Uh, assigning the data, checking the sending the headers, sending the data, and here the hello. How we have uh, assigned the actual header is a very interesting situation. So, the hello here uh, is a simple function that we assign in the comments above. Yeah. Okay, so here are the comments. Uh, we have one option here which is called the uh, flow, and it has to be in the location context. Sorry, in the location context, and it has to have one option. And I'll now switch back to the presentation so I can explain all of these things, all of the separate parts of the module. And uh, at the end, we'll simply run the engines from this. I'll com I compiled it uh, while I was listening to the previous talk, so it worked. Okay. So the return codes are uh, very important to not to try to reinvent those. Uh, one and zero are not return codes uh, in most projects that I work with. So you have specific device here. Uh, engines okay is uh, the usual case, and uh, usually you're doing either uh, engine deploy or uh, engine error uh, for uh, the finish of your. Uh, handler or uh, exit of your function. Uh, you have uh, functions in engines that are directly checking those device and it's pretty easy to, to use those functions and with those will generate nice uh, logging instead of uh, reinventing everything. They have already done this for you. Uh, very interesting are uh, the engines again and the engines busy. Uh, busy are the, you can ask engine to try again and again uh, your function until it finishes, until your function returns something good. Uh, when would you use this? This is usually in uh, old answers. When uh, one request uh, has reached your function, your function sees that uh, there is no available upstream that uh, you can return back. And uh, you can ask engines to ask you again uh, to start uh, the to <coughs> check if there are suitable strings. So, Nginx again is uh, usually quite a nice uh, uh, option for this kind of stuff. Then, uh, you have different components in the model. You have the configuration structures, which are uh, holding your uh, configuration, if you have any configuration from uh, the configuration files of Nginx. You may write, uh, write a module that actually doesn't need any configuration, then you simply don't, don't need uh, configuration structures. Uh, you can have uh, your, uh, you can define static or uh, dynamic uh, strings or uh, arrays or lists inside engines and use those directly without having a uh, configuration uh, structure. However, there are some nice functions with configuration structures that if you define your um, temporary data that you're storing between, for example, uh, threads, uh, in configuration structures, you can use this uh, very easily without uh, diaphragizing uh, like 10 or 11 pointers uh, before you get to your data. The problem with uh, this is when you're writing uh, modules for Apache for engines, uh, usually your data is not uh, located directly for your client, somebody else before you have already located the memory, and you have to diaphragize uh, uh, a few pointers before you actually get to the uh, point where you can actually access your data that you have created. This is why I prefer when uh, I'm writing modules to use the configuration structures even if I don't have uh, configuration options from uh, the configuration path. Then we have uh, directives. Uh, this is how your options are actually uh, handled. You would see this in a bit. Then you have the context of the module. This is where you actually define everything, uh, combine the configuration structure with uh, uh, the directives. And then you have the definition where you put the context and say, this is this type of module, uh, this is its initialization, and that's it. And the actual header function usually is uh, combined here, is set here in the directives. So now, uh, the configuration context. 
because you have the master configuration file, uh, the, HT the HTTP or mail or stream uh, for your engines, you have options that are available uh, only there, that are initialized only when you start uh, the web server or the proxy. So this is the main uh, context. Usually when you have uh, uh, when you have your module uh, for HTTP, you can say, okay, for main, for HTTP, my module name, the main, uh, the main context, and this is the name that you should use for your configuration structures. Uh, it's not enforced in any way. It's uh, simply the standard way that uh, you're writing modules. Uh, say for server and for location. For server, I mean the server uh, virtual cost configuration techniques, and location is actual location of uh, uh, your engines. <coughs> so the next thing is uh, we are defining uh, some codes here. Uh, we will have the hello, the hello world, uh, the hello world here, and it should be in location context, and it will take one uh, option. How I know this? Because uh, this is written in uh, the header file. Uh, what one of the header files there? I don't remember how they interact right now. You can define which option is available where, and you can combine them. So one option can be uh, available in main, and then it can be overwritten in uh, the configuration file, and then it can be even overwritten in location. So uh, you can combine those. Uh, you can also say that this option is available only in the strings. Or then you can say this option, now uh, after you have defined where this option is available, now you have to say where, uh, how many parameters does it get. So you get uh, no arguments, it's, you simply put this option and you enable something in your module. Or you have one, two, three, four, six, five, seven uh, options. Uh, and this is when you say that your uh, directive has seven options, it actually requires all seven of them. Then, if you don't require all the all seven of them, uh, there is one more spot here. Sorry, uh, you can you have uh, other defined so like uh, this is a boolean option, so it gets all or off only. Uh, it also can have um, one or two options, so you get uh, take one or two here. Uh, or uh, take two or three, so which means uh, two or three options, uh, and, or you have one, two, three, that means one or two or three options. <laughs> uh, these, I think, are for all. Uh, the other thing, after you define how this option is actually handled, uh, handled this is important for parsing your configuration file. After that, uh, you need to set the option, and you have different functions for taking different types of data. Strings, uh, integers, floating points. Uh, in this case, we have string function, so what we are parsing after go uh, should be string. And we have different functions for different things. Like we have function for uh, flag, which is on or off, or one or zero. Uh, and this function handles both cases for us, one or zero, or, or uh, on or off. Uh, it's this, uh, this is for the string, uh, this is the millisecond, uh, this is a uh, buffer. Uh, you can get a uh, buffer where you put data. This is usually when uh, something else is defining a variable for you. Uh, this is quite useful when you're using maps in uh, engines. Uh, do you guys know what a map is? Uh, it's the most efficient uh, way to do ifs, uh, if statements in uh, the configuration file of uh, engines. Uh, and it uh, supports both uh, um, string match, direct string match, or uh, regular expressions. So it's uh, quite uh, uh, quite useful, and uh, it produces one thing as a, a result, and that result can be used. And if your function, uh, if your option uh, receives a buffer, this is something that may come from uh, if or not. Then you have a num, which is obviously num. Bit mask uh, string are <coughs> things that you get multiple strings. Uh, I may write it, but it's I think it was uh, comma separated strings uh, or uh, space separated strings. 
their space for everything. Sorry, their space for everything that means. Uh, set of uh, which is a group of strings, and then uh, you have number, seconds, uh, size, which is actually size t, and uh, key value uh, pair. These functions you don't need to write. And this is quite nice because you're in Apache for the same thing. You have to write your own implementation. And uh, if you look through the Apache, even through the, through the core modules, they are pretty implementing all the time. Uh, a to A to I and stuff like this, uh, this side of uh, different models. Uh, then you have derivatives. Uh, uh, where uh, this should be read to? Uh, it would be in the, the context of uh, location. And after that, you have to say where it should be put to. And uh, here you are writing your configuration, uh, the pointer to your and uh, you are setting which uh, element from this structure should be written to, this is the name. Uh, offset of uh, is again from uh, NGX, it automatically uh, finds your structure, finds the, the element that it knows uh, where to put your data. Finally, we have this pointer here, which was uh, the pointer we created in the beginning of uh, uh, the module. Uh, that would call the pointer to the function that is actually handling the request. So for this hello world, uh, a hello world, we actually uh, have uh, linked this word, a word with uh, this pointer here. This is what we're doing there. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is what I meant. This is the uh, pointer that we created, and uh, this is the, uh, what we're actually using here. This is the name of the function, and this is the pointer. Uh, we are very very simple. Then we have the context of this module. Uh, the context uh, actually introduces the parsing of the configuration. So you can parse uh, before starting uh, to parse the configuration. You can prepare initialize your configuration structure. So you may actually initialize uh, the values there, like uh, uh, initializing everything to zero, everything to one, everything to one, and whatever. Initializing there. After the reading the whole configuration. Nginx has includes in the configuration files, which means that you don't have a single configuration file, but every time you uh, see the include directive, you actually uh, are opening another file and reading the, uh, these directives from there. So after you have read all the files, you can execute something again. Then this is uh, for people that haven't written uh, Apache or Nginx modules. You have, for each file, you have to do some setup. Like, while you're reading the main file, uh, you can uh, create the configuration for the main file and then initialize that configuration. So creating is actually uh, allocating the memory for this configuration, for the structures for the main file. Then initializing it is actually reading the uh, data and uh, initializing the values that uh, you have uh, decided to set for the main configuration uh, from the main configuration path. Then you are reading the server definitions. And for each uh, server definition you can have different uh, uh, structures. Unfortunately you can also have uh, different main, uh, the main path may include additional files. In this case, uh, if you already have defined something from the first file, you have to have a function that uh, should decide should it stay with the first value or for the, with the second value that uh, you can find. And uh, this is where the merging actually uh, comes for the main. Uh, you have merge, uh, you have uh, then the location configuration and merge for the server configuration. Uh, the rest is, uh, the final thing is uh, this, what I already explained, the uh, definition of the whole module. So you are, we already saw the, uh, the context and the comments. Uh, the initialization of the whole module defines different types of uh, functions that, different functions here that do different types of stuff on init or or exit. Do you have any questions there? Okay. Then uh, the actual header function is uh, quite simple. Uh, we get the configuration here, the pointer. We get the post and the data uh, 
as a plus pointers, we both allocate those. Engines have already allocated the, uh, those for us. The only thing that we have allocated somewhere is the configuration uh, that we get. And this configuration is uh, only for this request. It's very important that uh, you understand that you, you have to get the server definition or the main definition, uh, configuration definitions, in order to uh, store something after your request. So uh, we get this uh, pointer and from it, actually we create uh, our configuration structure here, pointer to the configuration, uh, to the configuration structure, and it is, we get it with this uh, very convenient function. We can see where things in the patches. So uh, then we define, uh, this is a handler, this is a handler, and this is the function that we get on uh, this request. After that, uh, we create a string, which uh, engine string type uh, has uh, name and length. Uh, length. So uh, we are assigning to the name the current data that we have, which is maybe I have to move something. Second point. Second. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. So uh, the data that we got from uh, the client, and uh, we are checking if uh, we have anything. So keep in mind that engines and the guys there decided to almost completely uh, <coughs> implement uh, all the string functions simply because of Windows. So uh, in order for their code to be portable between uh, Linux Unix and uh, Windows, they decided, OK, uh, we will implement uh, all of the functions uh, as definitions, and we will have different definitions for different uh, uh, architectures, yeah. operating systems. So uh, this is actually the same string comparison that uh, you know, but it's called index string comparison. Uh, nobody enforces you to do this. But if you want your code to be actually compatible with Windows, you would definitely want to use the uh, AD functions. <coughs> if we haven't received anything from uh, this data, sorry, this data is not from uh, the client. This data we have defined, uh, this is the result from uh, Hello, and we already saw this in the module lab. We'll get back to that code here. Uh, so this data here, is what we get from the configuration file, and we, if we don't get anything, we return a, a error because uh, uh, engines expects at least one uh, option, at least one string after the option hello. Why we know this? Because it's a one here. So we continue with this. We check if we have data. We assign the data to the hello string. Hello string was a uh, global string defined for this module. Uh, we get the string length, again, this is standard uh, uh, string length, it's not uh, anything else. Uh, the hero handler, I already explained this uh, in the code. Now let's look a little bit in, about in the internals when you write the modules. The string, this is something that you would uh, use a lot. Uh, you have uh, the length, which is size T, uh, compatible for all architectures, quite nice. Then you have the side chart, this is actually the side chart. And this is the structure that we use for strings. Then you have all of the standard functions that are uh, put to redefine the uh, engines in the strings header. And you also have uh, the other useful functions. Uh, MEM0 is actually a uh, MEM set with zero uh, for your region, quite nice. Uh, and uh, it checks, uh, gets the size of the region dynamically. And simply because all of your strings are actually, uh, all of your strings have, have length uh, in the structure, you don't care about uh, the size here because you have uh, defined the size in the structure. And if you have size, MEM0 will clean this. If you don't have size, this thing is not initialized, it will not do anything. Quite safe function. Uh, copy memory, move memory, uh, etc. LCHAR uh, is uh, quite nice because it directly works on the pointers uh, and very fast. And these all are useful when you are actually working with string data. And since this is a web server, you are working a lot with string data. Uh, 
then you have uh, to over, to over, case comparisons. Uh, you also have uh, to create uh, pearl breaker expressions in uh, engines, but uh, if you comp uh, compile your engines with uh, any of the open REST modules, uh, you will most likely have included also the uh, SRegEx library, which uh, if you want to write the regular expressions in your module, uh, I would advise you to go with the SRegEx, uh, simply because it's a lot faster. Yeah, it's not uh, so versatile, it doesn't implement everything that regular expressions should implement, but uh, most of the people that I know simply don't know the functionalities of uh, per regular expressions and so well to write anything more complex than uh, getting uh, one or two or five uh, elements from a string. So, uh, yeah, extra guess uh, works for most people. Then uh, we have some functions to initialize strings. Uh, you can initialize the uh, string type directly with the engine string uh, functions, uh, function and give it uh, the text that you need. You can initialize it to noon, you can uh, set it to uh, a different pointer, uh, noon the string pointer currently, and empty it to a free without uh, thinking about this. Uh, then you have AP, uh, AP is very important to know here that uh, if you haven't uh, hit this bug, uh, GCC and uh, c uh, and LLVM have their own implementation of AP, which is uh, uh, not so accurate. And if you simply forget the file line input, you actually get the GCC uh, implementation, not the actual C implementation. This is why these guys actually uh, wrote uh, this defined here to have this definitely to know that they're using the uh, C library in uh, A3. Then you have size T, uh, offset, and uh, the time. Why time is important? Simply because uh, most of the things we do in the web server are time sensitive. Uh, nobody wants to wait for a web page for 10 minutes, right? So uh, sometimes when you want to check if data is there, you simply do, uh, check if uh, enough time has passed. Uh, you have uh, time structure which keeps uh, the time in seconds, milliseconds at uh, current uh, time of day, uh, which is quite nice because uh, with a single function you set those and you get those. And uh, you also have uh, different functions for getting data uh, from uh, uh, the time. Uh, important when you're writing, for example, a module that would uh, prevent uh, DOS and DDoS to your web, uh, web server. Some, some things that uh, are not readily uh, ready available for engines. Uh, yes, uh, the memory handling. Uh, in web servers, usually you don't locate uh, memory per uh, string. You only use the memory uh, as a book, simply to get more memory for your turn. Since, you are, uh, since this is a uh, turn application, you don't want to have uh, global memory. You don't want to have uh, locking between threads. So the thread is allocated in memory pool, and from this memory pool, it's, uh, it is giving for each request, uh, for each web request, it's giving different uh, size of memory that you're allocating to its uh, engine's uh, peer lock. Uh, it gives you the flexibility that you simply don't need to free your memory, because after this request finishes, all the memory that you have already uh, acquired is directly free for you. Uh, instead of thinking where I have lost something, now we will simply put everything in the pool and that's it. Uh, when you have shared memory, you need to know that uh, uh, even though it is, uh, is uh, threaded, uh, you can start multiple processes uh, for um, on the machine and in each process we have multiple threads. So if you want to share some data between all the processes, obviously all the threads, uh, you need to use uh, shared memory. Engines use uh, memory, map, uh, memory map file to do this. Uh, and there was one more slide for the uh, functions for for memory. So you have uh, the nice thing is that you can get uh, Engine's PLO is uh, the equivalent of uh, malloc, but the difference is that uh, it allocates only from your pool, your pool of, uh, for your friend. 
That's why that's because it's a thread set. It gives you the thread set. Then you have uh, engines PCO walk. PCO walk is uh, the same thing, getting the, point, uh, getting the memory from uh, the book, but it is directly initialized to zero, which is quite nice because you simply don't need to name set it later or use uh, main zero uh, to uh, set all of your Trace. Obviously, if you're doing a, a big allocation, that wouldn't be very nice. There were three more uh, memory functions, but I forgot them. I don't know, maybe I could keep quite a slide. Let me check it. No, maybe I accidentally removed them. So, uh, before questions, Let's uh, see this module working, the hello module. Uh, this is the configuration for our hello module. Uh, the important part is uh, here. I have defined a location that is exact match slash hello. And inside there, I have my option at all. It takes one argument, which is this uh, word here. And I have engines running. So uh, before I actually show you the result, I want to show you that uh, this is how I compiled the engines. We compiled with app module. Uh, this is static module right now. Engines HTTP hello module. And I have added dynamic replace filter engines module, which can, if you want, we can uh, add later. And uh, this is how we can verify that you have your module inside the engines. You simply ask it to show you the version and it gives you the configure, uh, the configure line that you use to build it. So. Uh, We have engines here listening on uh, port 80. This thing. And now I will curl that hole. And since it doesn't have new one, because I'm stupid, uh, and, uh, here is the word test string that we uh, have created. So now I'll take questions. <laughs> If you have any. <laughs> Your first module would take like, something like uh, 15 minutes to build. So try to experiment, it's pretty easy, and you can do a lot of things with it directly in your engines. Sure, you don't have questions? That's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, man. Thank you.